Okay, so for today, we will be talking about colloidal dispersions or our gels and magmas as part of our post-laboratory discussion for experiment number 11. So for our gels and magmas, they are considered colloidal dispersions because they contain particles of colloidal dimension. And many of the various types of colloidal dispersions have been given appropriate names. For instance, we have here the term sol. So for um, the term sol, okay, we have here the term sol. It's a general term to designate a dispersion of a solid substance in a liquid, a solid, or a gaseous medium. However, more often than not, it is used to describe the solid-liquid dispersion phase or dispersion system. And then, to be more descriptive, some people, they add prefixes such as hydro, okay? They add the prefix hydro for water, for dispersions containing water as the disperse, dispersing medium. So they call these ones as the hydrosol. Some, they use alcohol as their dispersing medium. So they add the prefix alco to form the word alcosol. So this refers to colloidal dispersions using alcohol as the dispersing medium. And then... Uh, for our colloidal, di di colloidal dispersions, our colloids, they exhibit what we call as the Tyndall effect, okay? So for this Tyndall effect, this is the effect of light scattering in colloidal dispersions while it does not scatter in our true solutions. As you can see here, here's our colloidal dispersion, here's our true solution. So basically, our Tyndall effect, this effect is used to determine whether a mixture is a true solution or a colloid. Okay, now let's move on. We have here the gels. As defined by the USP, they are semi-solid systems consisting of dispersions made up of either small inorganic particles or large organic molecules enclosing and interpenetrated by a liquid. So um, by the term itself, they are, they are semi-rigid systems. Okay, and for some of our gels, some of our gels, they are clear as water. Some are turbid. And this basically depends on the ingredients added. So some of our gels are as clear as water and others are turbid because of the ingredients. Okay, the ingredients may be not completely molecularly dispersed or not completely soluble, okay? And so they become turbid. For our gels also, they contain, of course, what we call as our gelling agents. So for our gelling agents, they are, or they undergo a high degree of cross-linking or association when hydrated and dispersed in the dispersing medium or when dissolved in the dispersing medium. For the concentration of our gelling agents, it is mostly less than, mostly less than 10%, okay? Usually in 0.5% to 2.0% range. Okay? So, our gels when they are in their macromolecules, okay, or when our gels are macromolecules and are distributed so that apparent no apparent boundaries exist between them, they are called single phase gels. But when gels or the gel mass consists of flocules of small distinct particles, the gel is classified as a two-phase system. And frequently, our two-phase system gels are called magmas or milk. Later on, we will discuss our single-phase and double-phase or um, two-phase system um, gels. Moving on, 
certain terminology has been um, developed to characterize the various degrees of attraction between the phases of colloidal dispersions. We have here the lyophilic colloids, lyophobic colloids, and our association or amphiphilic colloids. Okay. If the dispersed phase interacts appreciably with the dispersion medium, it is said to be lyophilic. Okay. If they are solvent loving, they are lyophilic colloids. So when the dispersing medium exerts an attraction on the dispersed phase, then we call that one as our lyophilic colloid, or we call that gel as lyophilic sol or lyophilic colloid. On the other hand, we have our lyophobic colloids. Okay. For our lyophobic colloids, if here lyophobic colloids if the degree or if the yeah if the degree of attraction of the colloid is small the colloid is termed as lyophobic or solvent hating when the attraction between the dispersion medium and the dispersed phase is very little then the sol is called lyophobic or solvent hating and then a third type of colloidal sol is termed as association or amphiphilic colloid. So for this association or amphiphilic colloid, it is formed by grouping or association of molecules that exhibit both the lyophilic and lyophobic properties. So again, we have here our lyophilic, they are our solvent-loving gels. And, and then our lyophobic, they are solvent hating. And that of our um, association or amphiphilic, they both have the properties of our lyophilic and lyophobic gels.